welcome to Mastering Diabetes Live. My name is Corey, and we are also going to be going live on Instagram, Cyrus. You got to pull it up. Pull it up right now. Grab oh, I got to do it live on Instagram you're as gonna we talk? Go, you're going to go live on Instagram right now, and I want you to just show the screen so our people on Instagram can go live with us. It's going to take a second, but guys, we are excited about this. And we are going to be going into Memorial Day weekend. Um, and we hope that you can think about those that we have lost uh, as, as they have served our country and that we can also um, give you a, a little bit of a break. But we want to talk about nitrate-rich foods. Did you get it, Cyrus? Are you in? I'm not even logged in on my phone right now. Not All right. Well, that means that I'll do it. Um, Cyrus, yep. talk to me about nitrate-rich <laughs> Um, let's talk about I'm going to go live on Instagram real quick. All right, cool. You can do it. All right. So here's the deal with nitrate rich vegetables. Uh, the, the, the reason we talk about them in the first place, the reason why they're even important is because, uh, hypertension, which is high blood pressure affects an alarmingly large number of people. If you are living with high blood pressure, write the word BP in the chat box. Okay. Just the letters BP. And what that means is that, uh, Finding ways to treat your high blood pressure and bring your blood pressure down is a very important topic. Uh, high blood pressure can be a significant risk factor for a stroke and for a cardiac event into the future. And anytime your blood pressure is elevated, that's not a good thing. Okay. So if you go to the doctor and your doctor says, okay, you know, they do a blood pressure test and they find out that your blood pressure is, let's say, 135 over 105. Uh, they're going to be like, oh, hey, Mr. Johnson, uh, it's time for you to start taking some blood pressure medication. Then they're going to prescribe you a pharmaceutical drug that's going to be effective at lowering your blood pressure. The question is, why is your blood pressure high in the first place? And secondarily, do you need to use a medication? And the answer is uh, most people end up with a high blood pressure due to a number of different lifestyle characteristics. Being overweight can increase your blood pressure. Having a high fat diet can increase your blood pressure. Eating animal based foods can increase your blood pressure. I'll show you some research about that. And um, being sedentary can significantly imp impact your blood pressure uh, in, in the wrong direction. But what most doctors are unaware of is that you can eat food that will lower your blood pressure. Okay. There are four foods in particular that have a very powerful uh, blood pressure lowering effect. And as I'm looking here, I see Jacqueline. Marquisette, Ficadu, Sandra, uh, Patricia, Eric, all of you guys are saying that you have high blood pressure. So thank you for saying that up. And Cyrus, before you get into these four, I do want to show people a very special guy that we're giving away for free. Now, if, yeah, you've seen our, if you've seen our lives before, guys, these vegetables, these foods, everything in it is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to show it to you real quick. It is called the Foolproof Natural Recipe Guide. Foolproof Nutrition recipe guide. It looks just like this and we're going to give it to you for free. All you have to do is one simple thing. If you're watching live, all you have to do is comment guide. G U I D E. Just in case you don't have to spell guide. That is what we want you to comment. Comment with the word guide. We will send this to you immediately. It will come right to you in your direct messages or your messages inside of, um, <clears throat> uh, Facebook messenger, right? Okay. Can you show some more of the recipes here? Because like the table of contents is cool, but the actual recipes are like <laughs> really freaking cool. Heck yeah. Okay. Beth, so yeah, scroll down. There's good. This is good. Okay. We got quinoa power bowl. Just fly mm. cauliflower. If you're a cauliflower person, amazing. We got a boom. Oh, that that's thing cool. is ridiculous. This is your favorite. Am I right? Yup. Yup. Yep. Papaya mango salad. Ooh, sushi burrito. Okay. Ooh, I haven't actually made that. I want to make that. That's a good call. Nice. All right, guys, listen, just comment guide. We'll send it right to you. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, you're going to need to send us uh, a message, uh, you know, or, or on Facebook, just say guide and we'll send it right to you. Okay. So yeah, just, right. Yeah. So if, if you're on YouTube, let me just be clear about this. This is kind of wonky, but given the way that this streaming platform works, if you're on YouTube and you type the word guide in, we literally can't see it. So do us a favor and you have to switch over to Facebook or switch over to Instagram and there you can send a message by writing the word guide. And then if you do that, then we can get, get it over to you. So also, apologies for the, for the clunkiness, but. Okay. And, and guys hang out to the end because we are going to answer some questions. We're here uh, for the next 23 minutes uh, with Cyrus. So uh, go ahead and ask some questions. If you have them again, comment guide, we will make sure that we send you everything automatically 
in your direct messages. Okay. So Cyrus continue. We got four vegetables that'll help lower your blood pressure. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to, I'm going to, let me share my screen here real quick because there's some fun stuff that I think could be cool. Uh, okay. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Here we go. Can you see my screen right now? There we go. Boom. Yes. All right. So these are the four nitrate rich vegetables that I would strongly recommend having into your diet. Okay. Number one, beets. Number two, arugula, otherwise known as rocket, if you are outside of the country, which is by far a way cooler name than arugula. Uh, number three, spinach. And then number four, Swiss chard. All right. Now, these four vegetables are four vegetables of a large collection of vegetables that are all nitrate rich. What the heck are nitrates and why do we care about them? Nitrates are compounds that are present inside of these vegetables in large quantities. And when you consume the nitrates, the nitrates get reduced to another compound called nitrites. And the nitrites then serve as the building block for a gas. And the gas is called nitric oxide. This is not the kind of gas that you generate inside of your digestive system that makes you fart. This is a different type of gas that's inside of your blood vessels. And it is released in, in like ridiculously small quantities, but a tiny bit of nitric oxide release causes blood vessels to do this. They go from being like yay big to all of a sudden yay big, okay? It's called a dilation of a blood vessel. So when you eat these foods within an hour, your blood vessels inside of your heart, these are called macro blood vessels, large blood vessels in your heart, in your arms, your muscles, your, your lower body that are fed by these very large blood vessels, those blood vessels just get a little bit bigger. And that's good because they can deliver more oxygen to tissues. But then in addition to that, blood vessels that are inside of your kidney, that are inside of your eyes, that are inside of your brain, they also begin to dilate. And that's a really good thing because that perfuses or allows oxygen to get inside of those, those tissues. So when you eat these foods, these foods are a very simple way to get blood vessels to relax a little bit more, give oxygen to tissues, and that in turn lowers your blood pressure. So if you can get into a habit of eating one serving or two servings, if you really want to get an A plus per day of any of these foods, like you could have beets for lunch and then you could have some spinach for dinner. You could have arugula for lunch and Swiss chard for dinner. But if you can get at least one serving, hopefully two servings per day, then this can be a really powerful substitution for blood pressure medication. The last thing I'll say is that we're not doctors and we cannot tell you when to reduce your use of blood pressure medication. That goes beyond my, you know, my, my medical expertise. So what I want to tell you guys is if you're working with a doctor, please work with your doctor and say, hey, look, I'm putting these in my diet. My blood pressure is going down. Let's try and use this as a substitute. And when you do that, we have found there's a lot of people who can get off of blood pressure medications. And it's a pretty darn powerful approach with zero side effects. Uh, zero side effects. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm having trouble getting into Mastering Diabetes Instagram. But the good news is I'm in. Okay. I'm not going to go live right now because if I go live, every, we're going to have to start over. So we'll just have to go live on Instagram in just a second and let everybody know. But cool. guys, I want to remind you one more thing. And then we're going to take a couple questions. Uh, we're giving away a free foolproof nutrition guide. Okay. And that nutrition guide is absolutely beautiful. It has tons of recipes in it just for you. All you have to do is comment with the word guide and we're going to send it right to you. No questions asked. It's going to be right back into your direct messages. So um, just, you know, we showed it a little bit earlier. We're not going to show it again because we got to keep moving here and want to get to the questions. But I just wanted to let you know, just comment with the word guide. We will send it to you. If you're watching on YouTube, you need to send us a direct message inside of Facebook, or you can email us team at masteringdiabetes.org and we will make sure to send it to you. But that's what we got. Okay. Um, Let's see. We have one question, I think. We're going to put up on the screen. Okay, go for it, Cyrus. What do we got? Okay. If you have kidney issues, I thought I've heard you're not supposed to eat beets or spinach. I hope that's wrong because I like both. Okay. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, kidney issues, kidney issues. Uh, I don't think there's any contraindication. Not that I know of. Uh, I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, there is no contraindication for beets and spinach. So unless I don't know what I'm talking about, I would say maybe go check your references and figure out why you heard that. Okay, sweet. All right, well, listen, those are all the questions we have. If you're on Instagram, I highly encourage you to head over to Instagram because we're gonna go live. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, oh, oxalates, Cheryl. Okay, 
What about oxalates? Do you know what Oh, what about about? oxalates? Okay, so oxalates are important if you, okay, so um, oxalates are important if you have kidney stones. That's where the connection to kidney is. Okay, thank you. So um, people who uh, have kidney stones or are at risk for the development of kidney stones can end up generating a significant amount of them if you're consuming foods that are high in oxalates. To the best of my knowledge, um, when you integrate foods that are uh, like we just saw on the screen, these nitrate rich vegetables, and they are coming in in the context of a whole food plant based meal. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily run the risk of increasing your oxalate concentration so much that it leads to the development of kidney stones. One of the things that can create an increased kidney stone production is not only the consumption of oxalates, but also having a relatively inflammatory, aka acidic. Uh, collection of foods in your diet. Animal-based foods in general, whether they're white meat, red meat, dairy products, tend to metabolize to acidic compounds. And that can then lower the pH of your blood just enough, just enough to start to trigger a whole bunch of calcium release from your bones into the blood to try and buffer it, yada, yada, yada. But point is, is that when the foods that you eat metabolize to acidic compounds, that can then also accelerate the formation of kidney stones. But if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and there happens to be uh, beets and or spinach and or Swiss chard and or arugula inside of them, those foods do not metabolize to acidic compounds. They, uh, they metabolize to more basic compounds. And as a result of that, you don't run the risk of significantly increasing your production of kidney stones. Okay. So uh, you're, in a, you're in a safe place. This is a wealth of knowledge, Cyrus. Thank you so much, guys. We're going to continue this over on Instagram. Again, I'm going to leave you with this. If you're looking for a foolproof nutrition guide to help you manage what you are living with, to help you get on the right path as you go into Memorial Day, summer, and your entire rest of your life, I highly encourage you to go check this out. This is the foolproof nutrition guide. I want you to go grab it. All you have to do is comment with the word guide, G-U-I-D-E, just that one word, guide, in the comments if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on um, YouTube, you need to DM us on Facebook. Just go to Mastering Diabetes. You'll find us right there. 57,000 likes, 93,000 followers. We're right there. That's the one. There's only one Mastering Diabetes. And direct message us and we will send you this guide. Again, the word is guide. Just the word alone, okay? All right. We are going live over on Instagram right now. If you want to come follow us over there, come do it. Until next time, guys, Cyrus, I'm going to let you take us out and say bye to everybody. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to say one thing before I say bye. There's a comment from Cheryl. She says, what if you are experiencing histamine reactions? Cheryl, the answer to that is there is a book that you should absolutely read. It's called The Fiber Fueled Cookbook. Okay, mm-hmm. it's Will Bolsowitz's second book. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's an unbelievable. There's an entire section on histamine producing foods and what you can do if you do experience histamine reactions. He is the master addict. Go get that book and that'll answer pretty much all of your questions. Other than that, we'll see you guys on Instagram. We love you guys, and we appreciate you participating here. Any questions you have, we're going to try and answer them. Peace. See you over there.